In the first letter of Paul to the people of Thessaloniki, in chapter 5, he said that they should prove all things and then hold fast to that which is good. Personally, I don't, I, I've said a number of times, I don't really care about the New Testament, but I think this is a good thing in the New Testament. It's prove all things and then pick the one that is right and hold on to it. So today, what we want to prove is did Jesus did really die for us? Because, brothers and sisters, if you do not challenge what you've been told, then you are under hypnotism. You are under the God spell. A spell. You're under a spell. We know. There are things we know, there are things we don't know. What do we know? We know for a fact that the people who came to preach to us here came to deceive us. They didn't come here to give us salvation. We know, number two, is that our people had a morally higher position than those who came here to preach Christianity to us. So if we know that the people who came to preach to us actually lied to us, it behooves us then to look at the things they have told us, to pick out which one is true and which one is not. And that's what the, this letter to the first letter to the Thessalonians in chapter 5 said, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Then the ones which is not good, let it go. What we need to prove today, children of the Most High, and again, we don't need to go back 2,000 years to prove this. We can just use common sense to evaluate it. Did Jesus really die for us? This is the clarion call for most Christians. They say, oh, Jesus died for your sins. He suffered and died and for, for your sins. But... First of all, let's look at the fact that the so-called fact that Jesus suffered. If you read the crucifixion stories, or if you watch the movies, or both of them, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that most people have done both. This this crucifixion and suffering of the agony of Jesus lasted for one day, one day, and if you break it down, maximum five hours. That's when he was arrested, he was put crowned with thorns, he was flogged, he was, you know, they did this and did that to him. I agree, arresting someone and giving the person some soured stuff to drink and then flogging the person, that is suffering. But that is no way comparable to the sufferings we go through as a people. The, how does that compare the suffering that your parents suffer? Every day, this is not just one day, five hour thing. Have you been to the market and look at people that are pushing barrels, people that are carrying load? Go and tell them that Jesus suffers for them. You give me a cross, a piece of wood to carry from here to Golgotha, and then you nail me to the cross, which of course is not true, but let's, let's even assume that it's true. How is that suffering compared? Compared to what our ancestors, our parents, go through for us. There are some people I know when we're growing up, for them to even put on a cloth, they, they will have to maybe like sell like 20 bags of gary before they can buy one short necker to wear. How is the suffering of Jesus comparable to that? There are parents who go out there and they will do all kinds of work. They will even pack shit. They will carry block, carry cement, just for 20 naira. 20 naira! That has happened to me, children of the Most High, when I was young and we needed to pay for common entrance exam. We went to carry block. 300 block and they will pay you 10 naira. 300 block. You're telling me that Jesus suffered for me. How is that? How is my own suffering less than carrying... At the age when I was writing Common Entrance, I don't know, how old was I then? Maybe 10? How is a 10-year-old carrying 300 blocks not more than someone carrying a piece of wood from Golgotha to wherever that is? You see, this is the thing with Christianity. They downplay what you go through and they make you look up to some imaginary event. Because all these crucifixions, that, that is imaginary. That really didn't happen. Children of the Most High, it didn't happen. 
I've said this on and on again. Jesus that you guys are worshipping is a deity of the Romans. Alos in the Romans, they are. They, they actually, the thing is Jesus. An individual that those things happened to never really existed. That individual does not exist. What they did in the New Testament was to take the life and times of some Hebrew preachers and then they formulated a story out of from it. A story about the son, you know, the, one, the son worship and everything. That's what happened. That is the reality. But even if you believe that this thing happened, even if you say, okay, fine, let's assume that this individual existed and he suffered, how is that suffering comparable to what we did? How is that suffering comparable to what some of us are still going through today? People who are farmers, the brick, brick neck career here in Nigeria, even to this very day, you go in there, you're walking every day, you wake up early in the morning, you go out there, you are beaten by snakes, you're beaten by scorpions. How is that comparable to somebody carrying a piece of food from Golgotha to the other side and then they nail him to the cross? And you're telling me that Jesus suffered. So Christianity downplays what you go through. Whatever you're going through, whatever your parents went through for you is totally nonsense. Come and look at this man. He carried a piece of wood from here to there and they put chukuchuku on his head. That's it. They put chukuchuku on his head. Really? Do you know if, for those of us whose parents were farmers, when we go to cut palm tree, do you know how many chukuchuku that cut our hand, that shook our hand? How is that comparable to a woman having that experience for just three hours in a day, in one day? Now I'm not going to hear something. Now, let's look at this, the, the idea that Jesus so-called died for you. Jesus never said that. For those of you who read the New Testament, tell me where Jesus said, I'm going to go and die for the sins of the world. When Jesus was dying, did he say, I'm going to die for Keke Wokavo? Let me save him from his sins. Let me die for Chukwu the one Naoba. Let me save, let God forgive all his sins. He never said that. These are people who were writing 400 years later. Remember, most of the New Testament were written 400 years after Jesus. These are people who were writing things that tell you that Jesus died for your sins. Jesus never said he's dying for anybody's sin. In fact, according to the New Testament, when Jesus was dying, he actually asked for forgiveness for the Romans. <laughs> so if Jesus actually died, he actually died for the Romans. Again, for those of you who know, the Romans have they morphed into the British, they morphed into the Americans. They are still the same people today. They are still the same people that they are still the Zionists today that enslave your ancestors. That is why I say Jesus is their God. When you worship this deity, the deity is there to enslave you. You keep on enslaving yourself more. And whatever the sin they commit against your ancestor, you are actually asking for that sin to be forgiven to them. Because that's what Jesus did. Jesus actually asked forgiveness for sins for the Romans, not for the world. Show me where he said that in his own mouth when he was dying. That he's asking for the forgiveness of sins for the world. He never said that. But he asked for forgiveness of sins for the Romans. And that's why we live in a world where people will come here and enslave our ancestors. Do you know during slavery, have any one of you taken time to read what happened during slavery? There are communities that went to war to protect their people from being taken and stolen and sold to slavery. They went to war. There are young men and young women with dreams and aspirations in life, but they had to sacrifice themselves to be taken to slavery just so they can protect the loved ones at home. Imagine what was going through then. Imagine what people were going through. Mothers would be crying every day for their children that have been stolen. And you're telling me that Jesus suffered. He suffered, no. But a person will carry stick from here to there. In one day, just one day, 2,000 years ago, now I'm going to hear something. So, children of the Most High, this is it's not about the suffering of Jesus 
or what Jesus went through. It's not about that. What we have here is a religion that is there to downplay what you're going through. It downplays that so that you keep on looking at you, you in all your mind. You say, "Oh, the white man is suffering for us. The white man is doing this for us." Anybody who has been trained in Christianity will never, ever want to take revenge on what has happened to us. You will never hate the white man. You will never, ever oppose the white man because you have been trained by a religion that teaches you that the white man suffers for you. But it's not true. We know it's not true. Even the Bible says, prove all things. I mean, the New Testament Bible says, prove all things. We can prove that that is not true. We can prove that the suffering our people go through every day, every blessed day, is much more than someone carrying wood from, I don't know, from the palace to Golgotha. If you tell me now, go, go and push barrel in Ochanja Market, that's how you make a 10 naira. You have to carry load, push barrel from here to there just to make 10 naira and carry wood from here to Golgotha only once, once in your entire life. Which one will you do? Now, the idea of Jesus being nailed to the cross or crucified, again, for, you don't even need to look at that. Human being, you cannot be nailed to a cross in your palm and that will support your body. That is not possible. If they nail your palm, first of all, nailing to a cross is not a fatal wound. If they nail your palm, they run a nail to your palm into a wood, it will not kill you. The bleeding that will come from that will not kill you. It's not a fatal wound. Number two, if you nail someone to the cross, the person will not stay there. You will fall off because your palm, a palm cannot support an adult. It is not a child where you can lift him up with your hand. If you nail someone to the cross in their palm, you, the person will not stay there. The person will fall off. So this crucifixion story, you don't even need to look at anything. It doesn't hold water at all. It doesn't hold water. Nobody can substantiate that. If they are lying to you about the way Jesus was killed, what else are they lying to you about? And of course, like I said, all these things are just a lie. All these things are just a lie. When you look at the things your so-called Jesus have done for you, that does not come close to what my parents have done for me and are still doing for me. Jesus never called, mentioned anybody else that he was dying for. He never said, I'm going to go and die for the people of um Umutu. He never said that. So why are you saying that he died for you? You cannot say, okay, Jesus, you say you're dying for me. Come and prove it. No, he never said he's dying for you. You are the one who is making that assumption. He said he is dying for the Romans. He forgives the Romans. And that's why the Romans are prospering, no matter the evil they create in this planet. Because they have deceived us to worship their own entity. And that entity is there to reward them and not you. Do not be deceived to the most high. The game is a game of deception. Do not be deceived. This is a deity of the Romans. Again, get off this thinking. Get off these things you've been taught. Remove them from your mind because it's deception and it's not true. You cannot worship God in force. It has to be in truth. You must worship the Most High in truth. It must be from truth. If a story in the Bible is not true, it is not true. No matter what, if you even go through the Bible, even the Old Testament, there are stories there that are not true. Like, like the entire book of Esther, there's nothing truthful about it. You discard those things because the people who brought it here brought it for a reason. Think, why would they give you a Bible if not to completely dominate you? So, I want to point that out. It's easy for people to assume that when we, because we use the Bible in some of our preaching, that we believe the entire thing. No. You don't have to believe the entire Bible. There are things there that are not true. You point it out, you prove that it's not true, and you throw it away. Meanwhile, you hold fast to that, which is truth. That's what the Bible even said. And remember, the Bible was not written in one day. It wasn't written in one year. It wasn't written in 100 years. It was written over a long period of time. So there are things that are in there that are not true. Why would you hold on to that? 
And one of the things that is not true, if not the most important thing that is not true, is the story of crucifixion. The idea that Jesus suffered, he didn't suffer. Carrying wood from one place to the other, that is not suffering. At least not to our standard. Not compared to what our ancestors went through to protect our life. Not compared to what most of our parents are still going through today. That is not suffering. That is vacation, in my opinion. Then saying that he was nailed to a cross, he couldn't be nailed to a cross. An adult cannot be suspended with a piece of nail on a wood. It's not possible. And saying that he died for us, no, he did not die for you. He died for the Romans and he forgave their sins while he was dying. So, not for you, not for me. He didn't mention my name there. I didn't see my name while he was dying. Most I bless you. So.